In today's video, I'm going to be breaking down five things that I wish I knew when I started the carnivore diet whilst cooking a classic, mints and eggs. Alrighty, I won't lie, there's a bit of pressure on in this video because last time I uh, cooked some things on this channel, it didn't go too well, so got to dial in. Alrighty, whilst we wait for the pan to heat up, let's talk about the first thing. The first thing I wish I knew when I started the carnivore diet was that the first couple of weeks may be a struggle, but it just gets incredibly easy. At the start, it takes a while to get used to carnivore. For one, your stomach has to adapt. When you drastically change the way you eat, your entire gut microbiome changes. And for many, this can lead to stomach issues. I mean, I had that problem. When I first started the carnivore diet, I had these rather uncomfortable stomach rumblings and very, uh, rushed trips to the bathroom I, I think is a nice way to put it and many people experience the same thing like i said your gut microbiome changes and you also need bile to upregulate bile is what breaks down fat so when you change from this high carbohydrate diet to this high fat diet you have to wait for your bile to upregulate so it can break down the fat as well as some people get keto flu i personally had like a headache i think for one evening and that was about it but basically keto flu again your body's changing from carbohydrates to fats. It takes time for it to get used to this new fuel source. So for many people, they have these sort of, well, basically, as the name suggests, flu-like symptoms for a couple days. And then you also have cravings. You know, this absolutely tears so many people down. They go strong on carnivore for a few days, then all of a sudden, they're just craving everything. Many people slip off. However, these cravings are completely gone within a couple of weeks. So all you have to do is get through the first couple of weeks and they vanish forever. Now, again, this is because your body is getting used to not having carbohydrates. So it does whatever it can to trick you into having them, as well as the fact that your body's craving dopamine. You know, when you eat these ultra processed, super sweet foods, it gives your brain so much pleasure. And because, well, humans are literally wired in a way where we're either constantly seeking pleasure or avoiding pain. Because these things just give us so much pleasure, our brain tries to do whatever it can to trick us into these things. But after two weeks, it completely forgets how much pleasure it got from these foods and the cravings vanish completely. So if you can get through your first couple of weeks, it is incredibly easy. Alrighty, I should probably put something on the pan. Now I'm using tallow because personally I prefer over dairy. I don't think dairy is too bad as say, but when you have the choice of tallow or butter, I would go for tallow simply because in dairy there are many hormones which i mean how good for us are they really you know they're designed for the growth of baby cows it's high in things like estrogen i just can't imagine it's super amazing for human health again definitely better than the plant foods but if you have the option i would go for tallow over butter the second thing i would tell myself is to listen to your body Unless you have some severe autoimmune condition where you're just hyper responsive to essentially everything, you don't need to go super strict lion diet. Yes, ruminant meat is the best thing for you, but at the start, I think eating a variety of meats makes it a lot easier to stick to. Most people are used to eating a variety of different foods, so when you switch to a diet when you're only eating the same thing over and over and over again, it can feel almost, I guess, weird for lack of a better word. So I would include all sorts of meats, a bit of chicken, maybe a bit of pork if you want it, some ground beef, some steaks, just mix things up a bit. And what will happen is that over time, as you have more and more ruminant meat, your body will recognize, hey, this is the most nutrient dense. And because it comes from a ruminant animal, meaning an animal with a multi-chambered stomach, it's much better able to break down the plant that it's eating. So their meat ends up being a lot more pure as so. So you have more of the good stuff, it's more nutrient dense and less of the bad stuff. And your body senses this, it feels incredible when it eats this stuff. So what happens for a lot of people on the carnivore diet is that you'll start off having lots of variety and then your body sort of refines it down and you only really want the ruminant fatty red meat. Now the third thing I would tell myself, especially when I was thinking of starting, is that plants are truly the enemy. The whole plants are trying to kill you thing is complete and utterly true. For most of my life growing up, I had very little energy. I never felt that incredible. And I thought this was just normal. Then I switched to a carnivore way of eating. I felt incredible, way more energy. I'd wake up in the mornings with ease. Now, literally, I wake up well before my alarm goes off. I used to be that guy, you know, you'd have to hit every single alarm. I'd set five alarms for myself just so I could absolutely maximize the last second, the amount of sleep I could get. I'd almost set like uh, speed running PBs on how fast I could get out the door, simply because I left it so late to get out of bed. But now, like I said, I literally get up before my alarm, I have incredible energy, I feel amazing all the time, I stay effortlessly lean, and whenever I have a plant, I feel how I used to feel. 
Come come in the morning, my alarm goes off. I don't want to get out of bed. I don't have, I don't have as much energy throughout the day. It, I mean, yeah, literally, plants are trying to kill you. You know, well, maybe in a more figurative sense. I don't think plants really care if we live or die. They just don't want us to eat them. They have all these defense compounds, as we know, and they are definitely causing monumental effect. I mean, we can clearly see it demonstrated across society when you look at cancer rates and obesity rates. But plants, yeah, they're not our friends. Some of them taste good. I mean, we can all admit that. But they definitely, definitely do not want to be eaten. And we definitely pay the price. Right, when you're cooking the classic mince and eggs, look, another bonus tip. What a, what a value-packed video. Anyways, when you've cooked your mince, instead of taking it off and having it afterwards, chuck your eggs in with it. Trust me. Right, now once the eggs are in, basically, I just take it off the heat for the time being so the eggs don't get uh, too seared, chuck a lid on, and it's basically done. All right, now the fourth thing that I tell myself when starting the carnivore diet is that nobody has a clue what they're talking about when it comes to nutrition. I'm sure you have many friends, family members, I don't know, maybe even your doctor that thinks they know what they're talking about when it comes to nutrition. But in reality, 99.9% .9 of people get their nutrition information from the mainstream media news headlines. They don't even read the articles on how the studies are done. They'll see somewhere some headline on some garbage and they'll believe it. They'll run with it. You tell them you're eating lots of red meat and people people genuinely have the belief that red meat, it's been conclusively proven, hard science, that it's bad for you. Think about how insane that is. All you have to say to these people is, um, what, what study are you talking about? They won't have a clue, but they are 100% convicted with what they say. You see the same thing happen with certain political candidates and certain celebrities, not saying any names. And people have these incredibly convicted beliefs. They're 100% adamant that this person is a bad person, that this person's done this. And you say to them, well, you claim that this person is this. What? Can you give me an exact quote that they've said that demonstrates them being this quality that you've ascribed to this person? They don't have a clue. They cannot give you a single quote. What happens is people repeat a lie over and over and over. And after enough times of repeating the same lie over and over, let's chuck the, uh, the eggs back on the element for a bit. And once the same lie gets repeated enough times, it basically becomes fact. So all these people are talking about how you need fiber, red meat's bad. They don't have a clue what they're talking about. By the way, I made a video yesterday which debunks every myth about the carnivore diet and how it is allegedly bad. So if you haven't seen that, you might want to check that one out. And the final thing I tell myself is there is no going back. You know, so many people go on the carnivore diet just because they want to lose weight or for some reason like that, which to me doesn't make too much sense. You know, I think the prevention of many chronic illnesses is, you know, much more important than losing weight for, you know what I mean? Like there's no point in looking jacked, looking good if you're dead. So, I mean, I see the carnivore diet as more of a, you know, living a healthy lifestyle. But a lot of people, they'll come on the carnivore diet, they'll say, you know what, I'll do this thing for 30, 90 days. By the sounds of it, it sounds like it's an incredibly easy way to lose weight. And so you'll come on the carnivore diet with these expectations that you're only going to do it for a certain amount of time. But what ends up happening is you feel so good. You feel incredible. You've lost all this weight. Your mood improves because your gut heals and consequently you can produce more of the hormones that make you happy. A lot of people don't know this. Serotonin, the hormone that's responsible for a happy, calm sort of feeling. 90% of it is made in our guts. So when you remove all these plants' defense compounds and the inflammation clears and you can produce more of this hormone, you feel incredible. You have incredible energy. You lose weight effortlessly. People are coming up to you saying, yo, what are you doing? And you kind of get hooked. And then when you go to eat a plant, like I talked about earlier, and you don't feel great, all of a sudden you start looking at them differently. You know, I used to be, bait, well, actually no, I was addicted to the hyper-processed food. Most people are at one point in my life. However, now I go to the supermarket and I look at that stuff and I get angry. You know, I, I know how it makes me feel. I can see clearly demonstrated across society what it's doing to people. And yeah, you, you start to look at a different, hang on, my eggs nearly cooked. Actually, I'll give them a little bit longer. Anyway, so you, you start to look at this food very differently. It, it annoys me now. You know, you look at the back of a packet and you see numbers on the back. They're, they're not even ingredients. They're literally numbers. It's insane. And so, yeah, you literally, you cannot see this food the same way that you used to see it. And when I should turn the light on, it's pretty dark now. It's a very addictive lifestyle in the sense that because you feel so good, you get positively reinforced. And so you just basically just, 
you don't want to stop. You want to keep doing it. Right, the eggs are done. Let's put these onto a plate. Now, now I won't lie. I may or may not have cracked one as I put it in. Right, this is a... Uh, Last time I did this, it didn't go too well. Well, last time I did it on camera. So, uh... Now, I'll be the first to admit, I've seen better looking meals, but that's going to taste brilliant. If there's anything I've missed, do you guys have any other tips for people who are starting carnival? Comment them down below, I'm sure they'd greatly appreciate it. And yeah, I'm going to eat this meal. Subscribe if you like this video, and I'll see you all next time.